Hi, Terry Shanefeld here from UAB School of Medicine. In this video, we're going to discuss choosing a diagnostic test. For many disorders, there are several diagnostic tests available that you could choose from. So how do you know which one to pick? We'll talk about a systematic approach to helping you make this decision. Happy learning! In this video, we're going to discuss concepts of sensitivity, specificity, and likelihood ratios in choosing and using diagnostic tests. If these concepts are not clear to you, it is recommended that you review information about sensitivity, specificity, and likelihood ratios before going forward with this video. The first step in choosing a diagnostic test is to estimate accurately the pretest probability of disease. There are three methods that can be used to estimate pretest probability. I've discussed these in more detail in a previous video on the diagnostic process. The reason it's important to be accurate on pretest probability assessment is because testing is really only indicated when the probability of disease, the pretest probability, falls between the test and the treatment thresholds. Outside of these thresholds, there is no reason for further testing. So you have to be very accurate so that we know when to order a test, and it's only when the probability of disease falls between the test and the treatment threshold. And this concept was explained in greater detail in the diagnostic process video. And the reason this is important to think about is because there are often multiple tests that could be ordered for a given disease, and we need to pick the right one. So if further testing is indeed indicated because your pretest probability falls between the test and the treatment threshold, then the next step is to choose a diagnostic test to use. And the concepts presented on this slide are going to be very important, one of the most important slides of the entire course. One of the things that we need to do is think about our pretest probability before we order a test. Now this seems intuitive. You should think about pretest probability before testing. But in fact, many physicians order tests without really thinking about the pretest probability and really thinking about the role of testing um, in a patient. And there's really only two roles of testing to rule in disease or to rule out disease. And accurately determining pretest probability will help us decide whether we're going to rule in or rule out disease. Third, we need to think about the operating characteristics of our test before we actually choose one. Operating characteristics are sensitivity, specificity, likelihood ratios. We need to understand those first because they're going to play in with ruling in and ruling out disease. And then finally, we can't forget, what are we going to do with the results of our test? Is it going to make a difference? If ordering a test makes no difference in the treatment that you're going to provide, there's no point in ordering the test. And other things is we have to also consider the patient's comorbidities. So in a person with lots of advanced comorbidities, what's the point of ordering something like a PSA as a screening test to see if they have prostate cancer? It's not going to impact what we do. It's not going to improve the patient's quality of life or longevity. So think about before you order a test, how am I going to respond to the results that I get? And if the answer is nothing's going to change, don't order the test. So first, let's think about what's the role of testing. And there's only two roles like I can mention a minute ago, to rule in a diagnosis or to rule out a diagnosis. That's it. So when we rule in, we want to confirm that a patient has a disease that we're interested in. And we do this when the pretest probability of them having this disease is high. So a patient with a high pretest probability, our goal of testing is to rule in disease. Very important. Ruling out disease, we want to confirm that the patient actually doesn't have this problem. And we do this when the pretest probability is low. So, very important concept. When we have a high pretest probability, our goal is to use a test to rule in disease. When we have a very low pretest probability, our goal for testing is to rule out disease. And this is important because when we want to rule in or rule out, we'll determine what type of test that we're going to choose. And it comes down to this decision of ruling in or ruling out is whether we need a sensitive or a specific test. When we want to rule in disease, we use a specific test. When we want to rule out disease, we choose the most sensitive test. So ruling in specific test, ruling out sensitive test. And a good way to help you remember this is the mnemonic spin and snout. What spin means is a specific test, if it's positive, rules in disease. Snout is a sensitive test, if it's negative, rules out disease. So specific tests are used to rule in disease when patients are at a high pretest probability. Sensitive tests are used to rule out disease when patients are at a low pretest probability. Very important concepts. Alternatively, likelihood ratios can be used to choose a test. So if we want to rule in disease, we want to pick a test who has a very high positive likelihood ratio. If we want to rule out disease, we want to pick a test that has the lowest possible negative likelihood ratio. 
And likelihood ratios are very useful because they're ratios of sensitivity and specificity incorporate both measures. So in a way, they're really much more useful than sensitivities and specificities by themselves. So let's see how well you've learned these concepts. I'm going to ask you two questions. I want you to think about the answers, pause the video, um, come up with a rationale of why you chose test A, B, or C, and then we'll go on with the video and we'll see how well you did. So first question is there's three possible tests to uh, use in a patient for whom we want to diagnose a particular disease. The particular patient you're looking at right now has low risk for disease. So which among the tests, A, B, or C, which you choose, and think about why you would choose it. Pause the video and then come back and um, see if your answer is correct. So let's see how you did. So this particular patient is low risk for disease, so we want to rule out disease. When we rule out disease, we want to pick the most sensitive test, or the one with the lowest negative likelihood ratio. So the correct answer here is C, because it has the highest sensitivity at 95%. And you'll also see that the, um, the negative likelihood ratio is the lowest amongst all these tests. Um, and so sensitivities and negative likelihood ratios go hand in hand, so they're both are very useful in choosing a test. Second question is, again, which one of these three tests would you use at a patient who now is at high pretest probability for having this disease? And think about the rationale of which one you chose. So pause the video again, look through these tests, choose one, and then restart the video and see how you did. So let's see how you did. So in patients at high risk for disease, we want to rule in disease. When we rule in, we pick a specific test, or the one with the highest positive likelihood ratio. So the most specific test would be test A. It has a 94% specificity. It also has the highest positive likelihood ratio. So again, to rule in disease, think of spin. To rule out disease, think of snout. This video has helped you understand more about this topic. Remember, if you need any more help, you can always contact me through the course website or through the Contact Me section on my blog. Take care and have a great day.